Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Now rest. The doctor ought to be here any moment. A doctor now? Just in case the exertion was too much. You think of everything, don't you? I have to if I'm going to be your alibi. Where is it? What happened? It didn't work out. Just as I was getting at the stuff, the night watchman heard me cough. And you ran like a rabbit. Anyway, they can't trace the briefcase to us. Come in, doctor. Well, let's have a look. Well, what about it, Doc? Well, more rest and stay off your feet as much as you can. Think a change of climate might work the trick? Of course. Of course, mountain air. The Adirondacks, the very thing, if you can afford it. I know just the place, Lake Placid. Don't worry, Doctor. I'll be there to be sure he rests. Careful, or he winds up alone. What are you talking about? Why string along with an invalid like me? Your good looks, Henry. Where did you hide it? Don't you worry, Bailey. You take care of me, and I'll take care of you. Tell me if Mr. Jerry North is registered here. Mr. and Mrs. North just checked in. Thank you very much. Operator, could you connect me with the... I 
thought I told you to stay away from the phone. You're here for one thing, to take care of me. Now get that straight, to take care of me. <coughs> oh, stop acting. <coughs> you better lie down for a while. I don't take orders from a dame just because she calls herself a nurse. No hospital would let you change the sheets. Yet. The mountain air sure works fast on you. It's just the idea of being alone with you, darling. No cares, no responsibilities. Sleep when you feel like it. No friend popping in unexpectedly. The book business could go bust, the apartment burned down, and we wouldn't even know it. Oh, well, that's a pleasant thought. Oh, it's merely a figure of speech. He doesn't just give you a clandestine feeling, huh? <laughs> Before lunch? Oh, it proves how badly you need a vacation. It proves I'm hungry. Room service? We get lunch on the Sunday. Oh, this is the life. Oh. What are you staring at? Her. Betty! Jerry! <laughs> you haven't changed a bit after all these years. Uh, you here on pleasure? No, on a case. Uh, Betty, I, I want you to meet my wife. Pam, this is Betty Ferris. Uh, she was a student nurse at the hospital when I had my appendix out. Oh, uh, won't you sit down? I'm sorry, I have a patient. It's so nice seeing you again, Jerry, and meeting you, Mrs. North. Well, don't stand on ceremony. Drop in any time. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. No cares, no responsibilities, no people popping in unexpectedly. Oh, darling, how was I to know? Who is it? Betty. Where you been all afternoon? I had lunch at the lodge. I told you I would. Lunch takes two hours. What do you call that you've got on? A lunch frock? I thought I'd get some sun. I've been shut in so much of the time. Too bad about you. Too bad about us. We could be in Canada right now, having the time of our lives, if you'd only get that money. We've been over that. You know it isn't safe for me to go back for it yet. The cops would be sure to pick me up. I could go. Yes, I know. You'd be delighted to. And you'd keep right on going once you got your hands on it. Well, you don't know where the money's hidden, and that's the way it's going to be. I believe you forgot this. Thank you, Mr. North. If you'll excuse me, I'm busy at the moment. So you're shut in all the time. Had to get yourself some sunlight. Pick up a strange man, you mean? This was no strange man, and his wife's up here with him. Listen to me, or I'll walk out that door and never come back, and I mean it. Mr. North happens to be a former patient of mine. I sought him out, but only because he could help us. How? Let me tell you about Jerry North. He's a friend of the police, an influential citizen, and loves to play Good Samaritan. He's bound to be sympathetic to the plea of his own nurse for a helpless invalid who's gone wrong. Please forgive me for burdening you with my troubles, but I just don't know where else to turn. Of course. Now, let me get this straight. You first met Henry Mills at City Hospital, where he came as a patient. And when he was released, he hired you to look after him while he convalesced. Yes. And shortly after you came up here, he confided the embezzlement of the $7,000 from the Brewster Tool and Die Company, where he'd been a bookkeeper. And you stayed on the knowing he was a criminal? But he's not. He never did anything wrong before in his life. It's the disease. It makes the victim desperate for a chance at happiness. If he were a criminal, would he offer to make restitution? Well, he's been here nearly a week. Why did he wait so long? Can't you understand his dread of going to prison? He'd have one chance in a thousand of coming out alive. But why me to, to pick up the loot? If Henry went to pick up the money and was caught in the act, who'd ever believe he meant to return it? Betty, anyone caught with that money in their possession is in for serious trouble. 
Couldn't Mills go to the Brewster people first and, and let them pick it up? Of course he could, if he were a rational person. But he isn't. That's what I've been trying to tell you. The disease has made him apprehensive and suspicious. He's convinced that the company will demand his arrest unless there wasn't some influential person on his side. I don't mean to press you to help me. He's dying anyway. Perhaps we ought to just let it stand as it is. He has a year at the most. I just thought it would make these last days easier. Is that you, Betty? Yes. Are you presentable? Yeah. You didn't tell me you had visitors. Oh, this is Mr. and Mrs. North, the couple I was telling you about. They want to help you. How do you do? How do you do? Who told you to tell them? You said I could, don't you remember? You will help us, Mr. North. Well, I, I'm not sure Mills wants my help. Frankly, that's perfectly all right with me. I'm certainly not anxious to stick my neck out going after that money if he doesn't want any help. No, I, I do. I do, Mr. North. I feel better already knowing I'm in your hands. It's just this cough makes me crazy sometimes. <laughs> well, all right. Can you be ready to leave the first thing in the morning? Yeah. Well, it's late, Miss Ferris, and I'll work out the details. Just uh, one question, Mills. Where did you hide the money? Seven oh six Mott Street. Your apartment? In the basement. It's in a coal bin near the furnace. In a. for you, and suddenly Henry got the idea that this was a trap. He said he wasn't going to rot in prison. I'm sorry. Jerry, I tried to stop him, but he threatened to kill me. What are you doing? Phoning the police, of course. Please, Jerry, not yet. Give me a chance to find him. I know I can bring him back to his senses. He had a chance. If he's writing his death warrant. He should have thought of that. He didn't know what he was doing. He was in a panic. Please, Jerry, give me a couple of hours. I'll get him back. Oh, thanks, Jerry. I'll never forget you for this. Betty. Come back. Operator, give me Lieutenant Wagon, Police Department. Oh. Now, this isn't the first time your zeal to lessen the burden of the Police Department has led you astray. I don't doubt your intentions, Jerry, but good Lord, man, you weren't born yesterday. Yes, he was, under the sign of the goat. And you're getting mine. Look, Bill, I made a mistake, I admit it. 
But I always thought a condemned man deserved some special consideration during his last days. And Mills is a condemned man. He's dying. I understand that. But I hope you understand this. If the Brewster Tool people press charges, it'll be my reluctant duty to place you under arrest as an accessory after the facts. Oh, now, just a minute, Lieutenant. You not only passed on stolen funds to Mills, but in so doing, you made his escape possible. Oh, now, look, Bill, I... Hello. Just a moment. It's for you, Bill. Brewster Tool and Die Company. Thanks. Lieutenant Wigan speaking. What? Yes, I see. Well, thank you very much. I'll go quietly. They have no record of the embezzlement. They double-checked. Maybe it's the wrong tool company. No. Henry Mills has worked for them, a bookkeeper. And he was given a leave of absence about a month ago because of TB. But his accounts tally. Why would Mills invent a cock-and-bull story like that? Involve his nurse and a complete outsider? What, what was he trying to prove? I don't know. But there's something very fishy about this whole thing. About a month ago, the Brewster Tool Company was robbed of... Yes? Betty! What? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I see. Uh, we'll be right down. Betty found Mills at the Cherry Lane Hotel near the Battery. He's dead. Lung hemorrhage. She has the money. She's holding it for it. Lieutenant Wigan speaking. A man by the name of Henry Mills was just reported dead. A lung hemorrhage down at the Cherry Lane Hotel. Right, now get down there as soon as you can, will you, Doc? Good. Let's go. Excuse me, kids. I want to talk to the doctor a minute. Betty. I'm sorry. Here's the money. You see, I keep my word. I'm sorry to spoil your vacation. Is he from the plant where Henry worked? No, this is Lieutenant Wigan, police department. Why did you have to tell the police, Jerry? Henry's dead. There's nothing left for the police to do. Henry gave back the money of his own free will. Doesn't that make a difference? It's not fair to judge him as you would a healthy man. There's this disease eating into his mind. Where's the rest of the money? The rest? As far as I know, what's in the briefcase is all there is. Except what Henry spent in the mountains, and that couldn't have amounted to very much, just a couple of hundred. The difference between the few odd thousand found in this bag and one hundred thousand dollars is not just a couple of hundred. One hundred thousand? Henry embezzled that kind of money? I don't believe it. There is no embezzlement. We checked that angle. I'm talking about the hundred thousand dollar Brewster Tool Company robbery just 48 hours after their bookkeeper, Henry Mills, got a... Henry wouldn't lie to me. What are you trying to do, Lieutenant? Pin the robbery on him because he's dead and you need a scapegoat? The serial numbers on this currency match exactly with those of the stolen banknotes. But I don't understand how they... You don't have to pretend, miss. It was a good act, but it won't work. Betty, why don't you cooperate? If you know anything about the money. Okay, if that's how it has to be. Lock that door, Jerry. We're going to make a search. on your side either? Mm -mm. I've checked everything in there. Nothing. Yeah. Hmm? Oh. Well, at least we found something. Yeah. One of many years that's been there. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to submit to a personal search, Miss Ferris. You won't touch me. No, if Pam will assist me, though, I... Well, I should think you'd prefer Pam to a police matron. You're going to have to be searched, you know. Now, why don't you make it easy on yourself? How's it going to be?
well. No, Bill. Don't you think this has gone about far enough? You're free to go for the time being, Miss Ferris. Just don't try to leave town. Is that all you can say? Not even an apology? Treat like a common criminal? The lieutenant said you could go, Miss Ferris. What do you do with a woman like that? She's lying about the money, of course, but it... it, it... That money's got to be here someplace. A hundred thousand dollars in small bills makes quite a bundle. And the room clerk was positive that Betty never left the hotel after she came up here with Mills, huh? Well, that's what he says, but she could have hidden the money any place in the building. I better get a searching crew out here. Maybe you shouldn't have let her go. And Bill knows what he's doing. We can pick her up any time, and if she gets money from where she hid it, she'll be very cooperative. Hello? Oh, yes, Doc. All right. Yeah, thanks. That was medical examiner. Mills hemorrhaged all right, but not altogether from natural causes. He had a little help. He can't be far. Well, she's on her way down. There's a staircase. Come on. You'd better go up to the room and wait. Bill and I'll be right back as soon as we catch up with that little murder. Just get out of the elevator. Are you sure? through the night? Temperature perfectly normal. Oh, but that's a big disappointment. Tell me, well, what's this all about, this nurse's get-up? I just thought I'd see. See what? See what it is about one of these uniforms that always gets you, boys. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. It isn't the uniform. Mm, I think I get the idea. I thought you would. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers. Produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.